Okay everybody, today I'm going to be showing you if our universe is shaped like this or like this. And what does that even mean for our universe to have a shape? In order to understand the curvature of our universe, I want to introduce you to two two-dimensional people. This is Bob and Sue, and they're two-dimensional, meaning they're flat. And Bob lives in this two-dimensional world, and Sue lives in this two-dimensional world. And what I mean by two-dimensional is these people can only see what is in this plane in front of them. So Bob can only see what is on the surface of this sheet here, and Sue can only see what's on the surface of this ball here. So she cannot see anything up here. So she can't see me holding this marker up here. Bob can't see me holding this marker up here. But if I were to put the marker onto the sphere, then she'd be able to see it because it's now touching her surface. Now for us seeing this in three dimensions, we can easily tell that there's a difference between Sue's universe and Bob's universe. Sue's universe is curved and Bob's is flat. But for them living in the two-dimensional universe, it's actually quite hard to tell the difference. So in both of these universes, light always travels in a straight line across the plane. So for example, when Bob sees a cat, it tra the light from the cat travels in a straight line to his eyes. And when Sue sees a cat, the light from the cat also travels in a straight line across the surface and she sees it. Even if the cat were clear over here, since the light in her universe still travels in only straight lines, it would just follow the curve of the plane and she'd still see the cat clear over here. So to her, she can't even tell that her universe is curved because no matter what, she can just look over that way and see the cat straight across from her. And same for Bob, he can just look that way and see the cat over there. So let's say Bob and Sue wanted to know what the curvature of their two-dimensional universe was. Well, they'd have to come up with a method a little bit smarter than just looking at objects. Because no matter what to them, just looking, it looks flat to them. Now Bob is smart. He went to math class and he remembers his Euclidean geometry. He remembers that if you draw a triangle, no matter what, the angles always add up to 180 degrees, which also means something pretty simple. If you try to draw a triangle and you separate the lines by 90 degree angles, you're not gonna end up with a triangle. You're just gonna end up with a broken box. So you can't draw a triangle with three 90 degree angles. So because of this, he determines that his two-dimensional universe is actually flat. Now Sue is also smart and she remembers her Euclidean geometry. So she draws a triangle and she adds up the angles and sure enough, they all equal 180 degrees. And she tries to draw a triangle with three right angles and ends up with just an open box. So she also determines that she lives in a flat two-dimensional universe. But then she starts to second guess herself. She says that, what if just locally it seems like I'm in a flat universe, but if I were to actually draw bigger shapes, maybe I'd get different results. So she goes and she draws one right angle right here, and then she shimmies down her two-dimensional plane here, and she draws another right angle. And then she moves over here, and draws another right angle. So she's now drawn three right angles. She expects that she's gonna end up with this open box again. So then she goes to connect her right angles with straight lines. So here's one straight line, here's two straight lines, and then here's three straight lines. And then she just realizes that she just connected three straight lines together with three 90 degree angles. So she just made a triangle with three 90 degree angles. And three 90 degree angles added up equals 270 degrees, not 180 degrees. So with this discovery, she realizes that actually she's not living in a two-dimensional flat space at all, but she's living in a two-dimensional spherical space. So you can see that one way to prove the shape of your universe is just to draw some really big shapes. Even though you can't see it from a higher dimension, you'll be able to tell the shape of your universe. So Sue here has now proved that her universe is spherical, or another way to say it is that it has a positive curvature. And she actually could have proven this a lot easier way. Because of its sharp curvature, she could have just looked one direction. And because her light moves in a straight line, she would have seen that if she looks this way, 
she would have just seen the back of her own head. Because she's in two dimension and light travels in a straight line, it would have just followed this path along the curved surface here and ended up back at her eyes. Now that we understand how you could determine the shape of your universe if you were a two dimensional being, now we can understand how you could actually determine the shape of your universe as three dimensional beings. So just like Bob and Sue couldn't step out of their two dimensional universe and look at the shape of it, we as three dimensional beings can't just step out from our universe and look at the shape because that would require us stepping out into like a fourth spatial dimension and look at the four dimensional shape. But we can use the same tricks that Bob and Sue used. So for example, let's say if we want to test if our universe is actually a sphere, meaning it's a fourth dimensional sphere, and we're stuck on the third dimensional plane of it. Well, we know that we can't just look at stuff close to us. Just like when Sue looked at the cat, she couldn't tell that the cat was curved away from her because the light stuck to that plane anyways, and so it just looked normal. But one thing we can do is to draw a really big triangle. So in order to do this, if we knew some length deep into space, we knew how long something was, and we knew how far away it was from us, we could actually determine the angles of it, and we would be able to figure out if those angles actually add up to more than 180 degrees. And if it were true that those added up to more than 180 degrees, then we could determine that we actually live in a spherical universe meaning that our universe is actually a fourth dimensional sphere. But another way we could determine if we live in a spherical universe is just to do what Sue did and look really far in the distance and see if we see the back of ourself. Okay, so this is what it would look like looking through a really powerful telescope in a spherical universe. So there's the stars up there and I'm gonna start zooming in. Whoa. I see a planet. Let me zoom in even more. Hey, it's planet Earth. Whoa. I see planet Earth way in the distance. So you can see that if our universe were spherical, that would mean that if we just took a rocket ship and went one direction and just kept going and kept going and kept going, eventually in the distance we'd just see planet Earth coming up and we'd just keep going and we'd land on the back of planet Earth. We'd end up right where we started from. So in a universe with positive curvature, if it were spherical, that would mean that no matter which direction we started going, we'd always end up in the same spot. Or if our universe on the other hand is flat, that would mean that if we just keep going in one direction, we'll never end up where we started from. So what is the shape of our actual universe? Well, it's a little bit complicated. And the reason it gets complicated, because if you know anything about general relativity, you know that if you have mass somewhere, that bends space-time, so it bends the fabric of our universe. So wherever there is mass in our universe, it locally bends space-time, so it bends the fabric of our universe, so it changes the curvature. So locally, we know that yes, our universe is curved all over the place. Where there, wherever there is mass, our universe is curved right there. So locally, just by knowing how much mass or energy is somewhere, you can determine how curved the universe is right by you. But we don't want to know the local curvature, meaning we don't want to know if there's a little bump right here or there. We want to know what the whole thing looks like. Well, why don't we just add up all of the mass energy of the entire universe and see if we end up with a curvature that gives us a positive curvature, a flat curvature, or a negative curvature. So using this method of adding up all of the mass and energy of the entire universe and coming up with an average density, and also using the method where basically we draw a big triangle in the universe and figure out the angles. Using all these methods together, physicists have come up within a margin of about plus or minus 0.4% that they think our universe is flat. But the caveat to that is we don't know if the entire universe is flat. The only part of our universe we can see is called the observable universe. So the reason we have an observable universe, meaning that we can only observe what's inside of that, is because our universe is expanding and everything is moving further and further apart. So for example, if this slinky were our universe and it were expanding and everything were flying apart from each other, you can see that things that are close to each other actually don't move far apart from each other very fast. You can see that these two wires right here, as I stretch it out, 
they're not getting very far apart from each other. But you can see that this wire on the other end, it's moving really fast away from this wire. So the further away things are from each other in our universe, the faster they're moving apart from each other. In fact, the stuff that's really far away from us right now is moving so fast away from us that it's actually faster than the speed of light. And all of the things that are moving away from us faster than the speed of light means that their light can never reach us, so we'll never be able to see them. And so we really can only know the curvature of our universe inside the little bubble around us, which is around 46 billion light years long. We can only know the curvature of that bubble of the universe. Outside of that, we don't know about the global curvature of the universe. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. And if you haven't gone over to theactionlab.com, head over there and check it out now. I'm now selling on my new subscription box where you can get a box shipped to you quarterly that has all the ingredients you need in it to do experiments similar to the ones that you see me do on my channel. So head over there now, purchase the Action Lab box, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.